the Canela Cup. I'm very superficial. I hate everything official. I'm like, mama, baby, leave me out. And your sex life complications are not my fascination. Crystal beautiful water. You stand in the middle of all of this looking breathtaking. So... When are we gonna fuck? Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Karina Lude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Today we are talking about the icon, Grace Jones. There's a lot of controversy surrounding Grace Jones, but if ever there was a mystery in the world, it was Grace Jones. She became a symbol for those who don't care what other people think and who want to be themselves without an apology. The media in a cowardly and prejudiced response to her attractive distinctiveness tried to paint her as a little crazy while she was at the height of her celebrity. Jones' discomfort with the word different still persists today. Jones completely rewrote the laws of fashion, she matched her outfits to her emotional state. Grace Jones is a world-renowned model, singer, and actress. Starting out in the 1970s, she began her modeling career first in New York State. She became renowned for her bold features and distinctive androgynous look. In 1977, she embarked on a music career, signing a record deal with Island Records. This saw her become one of the most high-profile figures of New York City's legendary Studio 54 Center disco scene. In the early 1980s, Jones also achieved two Grammy Award nominations during this period for Best Rock Vocal Performance by a Female and Best Long Form Music Video. Jones has also appeared in many popular movies throughout her illustrious career, starring in films such as Boomerang, Conan the Destroyer, and Zulu. She has been cited as an inspiration by many artists, including Lady Gaga, Rihanna, Solange, and Lord. No wonder she was ranked 82nd on VH1's 100 Greatest Women of Rock and Roll list in 1999. In 2008, she was awarded with the Q Idol Award for her outstanding achievements, while Billboard magazine named her 40th Greatest Dance Club Artist of All Time in 2016. Grace Jones is truly one of a kind. Jones provided guest vocals on Beyonce's song Move from her seventh studio album Renaissance that was released in July 2022. Too. and some people are hoping to see her on tour with Beyonce. Wouldn't that be a move? That would be a move. Now, as far as her image and some of the controversies before we get into her childhood and just who she was. So Jean-Paul Goud, a French illustrator, photographer, and graphic designer, did a lot of the heavy lifting when it came to the visual style of Joan's work, like her whole aesthetics, right? Their combined work went on to define the visual environment of the 70s and 80s, writes Jake Hall of ID, and Good helped establish one of the most interesting mythologies in musical history. Good dated Jones from 1977 to 1984, and he described her as beautiful and hideous at the same time, with his words being, quote, she is both beautiful and grotesque. Mm. Thus she became his inspiration. He directed her music videos, choreographed her live performances, and assisted in shaping her image as the liner notes put it. Grace was very open, he started. This is a direct quote from him. We work together to create this intimidating character. I mean, she's naturally intimidating anyway with her body shape. Very straight neck, prominent cheekbones, and clean cut jawline. She's feminine, no doubt about that. But I've always thought that she was far more beautiful without the artifices she employed to make herself more feminine. I tried to emphasize that body shape through a sort of minimalist German expressionism with its games of shadow and its angular shapes. Grace is from Jamaica, so she speaks English in a quiet, thought-out way. I also advise her to address her audience, mostly composed of homosexuals, like a teacher would, with severity. All of that stuff contributed to the building of her image, end quote. And this is from an interview he did with Vice in 2012. With Jones as his inspiration, Good knew he would create something special, saying, I grew envious and possessive of the character that through her I was able to create, he confessed, implying that he viewed her more like a work of art than a living, breathing human being. Paolo was born during the course of their toxic professional relationship, and Paolo is her son with Good. They ended up having a child. So Jones was a big part of Good's work from that time. Over the course of the 1980s, by using a technique he calls French correction, in 2012, the artist said, 
and I quote, I like cutting up photos and putting them back together in an imagery to lengthen limbs, make someone's head look bigger, or change something else. I'm always looking for balance, symmetry, and rhythm in an image. Good's work centers on artistic representations of race, ethnicity, and global culture, and he is enchanted by the faraway and the exotic, end quote. Because of this, many of his pictures of black women are seen as controversial and sexist. As Jones was shown, she was called as a white man's version of an African woman. End quote. Good's picture of her emphasized her blackness and Jamaican roots by making her look very sensual and androgynous. Abigail Gardner, a writer, thought that Joan's body was shown and moved in ways that are clearly consistent with thinking of that display as artifactual, end quote. Hall says that in essence, Good treated Jones as an artistic tool first and foremost. This was an exaggeration, but it did allow Good to turn his grandiose vision of Jones as a phenomenon into a series of images that made her look like a surreal, impossible muse, even though it hurt their personal relationship. In my personal opinion, throughout her life, she was treated more like a work of art. Look at her, she's stunning, right? She's gorgeous. The more I look at her, just the more I'm in awe. And I loved how she dressed herself and how she, you know, was unapologetically just beautiful. She is gorgeous to me. I know she doesn't have the conventional look of beauty, but that's because the people who write the conventional look of beauty are looking at it from a one-sided view or a one-sided lens, you know what I mean? But there's so many people, like one of the things that Grace Jones used to always say in a modeling agency, whenever people would try her, photographers, it didn't matter who you were, you would try, she said, you know, I could quit this any day and marry into millions. Because there are a lot of people that find her look very exotic and very intriguing, you know? So we have to stop looking at beauty as one lens. And I do notice that a lot of, I'm not trying to be that person, I don't wanna be that person, but I got into the depths of her career and doing research and reading into the nuances of it. And I kind of agree with a lot of people who looked at her career through the lens of more open eyes nowadays and like, yes, those photographs were beautiful and all of this, but they did just use her as an object. And maybe she wanted it because she does like to stir up controversy with her look. She said she likes when people find her scary or she likes invoking a reaction from people and looking different. She loves that for herself. So maybe she was in cahoots with that, but we will see that there's a lot of other things that she had to deal with in terms of the modeling agency that were pretty cruel. And I just, I don't know. I want you guys to comment your thoughts below. What do you think about this? I'm really interested, but of course, keep it respectful, keep it nice. I'm really interested to see your thoughts, but let's get into her childhood and this is where we have the trigger warning. Depending on the source, Grace Jones was born in 1948 or 1952 in Spanish Town, Jamaica to Marjorie and Robert W. Jones, who was a politician and a minister respectively. In regards to the year she was born being a mystery, she stated, and I quote, the world likes to know a person's age for some reason as if that number explains everything. I don't care at all. I like to keep that a mystery, end quote. So Marjorie and Robert, her parents, left the Midwest for the East Coast of the United States where he worked as an agricultural laborer until a near-death experience doing an attempted, you know, taking his own life led him to a new calling as a minister. They left their kids with Marjorie's mom and her new husband, Pert, in the States to enjoy some time away. Jones called him Master P, her step-grandfather, and said she absolutely hated him because he was such a strict disciplinarian that the kids in his care were regularly beaten. Her step-grandfather resented having seven grandchildren all at once once he married the mother, right? The grandmother. And she said her grandmother was really nice. She would try to step in when he would try to hit the kids, but of course, you know, he was stronger than her and would push her out the way, but it left an impact on her. It, you know, that act of bravery to step in always stayed with her, but he got seven grandkids all at once when he did not want kids. So he wanted to control them and he used fear and religion to control them, which a lot of people do, which is why a lot of people hate religion. And I just want to remind you guys that people suck. People are terrible, but we cannot attach people solely to certain beliefs. Just like there are horrible Christians out there, there are wonderful ones as well. 
and it just sucks. So Joan saw him as a sadist who took advantage of his position as a guardian to, you know, put his frustrations out severely for no good reason on the grandchildren. Each child was you know whooped with a leather belt that was personalized for them and range in sizes and weights according to his or her age for particularly heinous offenses jones received a savage whack from a heavier belt she was hit quite hard not only for her transgressions but also for the mere possibility that she may commit one like i'm gonna whoop you although you're not in trouble because i know you're bound to get in trouble which is so toxic and is a caribbean thing they do that in the islands of Lot. I never understood parents who did that. Jones at an early age wrote letters home to her parents who left her, you know, in Jamaica with her grandparents, hoping to alert them to the brutality of Mass P's discipline. It turned out that Mass P, their grandfather, acted as a gatekeeper for all the male entering and leaving the home. So unfortunately, rescue was not coming for them. Jones and her younger siblings were forced to teach themselves self-defense and very peculiar ways. She was brought up in the Pentecostal religion, practiced by her family, and was required to attend nightly Bible studies and prayer gatherings. She started out at the Pentecostal All Saints School before being transferred to the public school in the area. Jones was an introverted kid who had one and only one friend at school, but she did have friends in her neighborhood. Jones and her siblings, being devout Pentecostals, were forbidden by their parents from associating with the atheists and the agnostics who lived on their block. Jones and her brothers, however, created a warning system in case Mass P returned home and played with the neighbors in secret. While the rest of the kids played, the older ones would take turns climbing a tree and giving, you know, a little warning whenever they spotted him coming. Often Jones and her brothers would be, you know, hit really hard for mixing with the other youngsters on their block because they missed, they didn't see him coming. So he used brutality against them as a means of establishing his authority, but the results was just a stronger resolve to defend one another. They got closer because of what happens. And usually this happens in homes like this. The siblings become really close because of both, all of them going through the same things. Jones remarked that if one of us were caught, the other would feel awful that we hadn't protected each other. Members of their congregation, not just Mass P, maintained a watchful check on the kids. In particular, the children's step-grandfather would often get reports about their misbehavior, quote-unquote, from a nun named sister Leia who then would punish them even more severely so that she was a snitch <laughs> the children finally snapped one day and plotted a bloody revenge when they could not take it anymore they were fed up and they all jumped her basically so all at once I kid you not they stumped on her at the same time and regrettably there were consequences for this actions as you can imagine Jones and her sisters were kept apart from their brothers so he split them up this didn't prevent them from playing together but it did force Jones to be sneakier about including them in her games as her social circles shrink she found herself increasingly isolated Jones who had few close friends already channeled her loneliness into a new pastime as she described it Jones used to crochet until the skin peeled off her fingers and then she would put on a bandage and start going again she compared her art to a type of praying since she found it so calming and put her in like this meditative state her little pastime was one of the few but brilliant lights in her life her classmates used to pick on her and call her skinny because she was super thin during those days but she excelled in sports and found peace in Jamaica's beautiful landscapes despite the taunts. She was also a tomboy. She would be on her doing handstands which she would get whoopings for because you know she wore dresses as a girl when she doing handstands and back flips and front flips or whatever her undies would show and she'd get in trouble for that and get whooped. So she wasn't allowed to even express her tomboy side from playing around with her brothers which can you imagine as a kid having to sneak around to have fun or play that's crazy to me i i can't even imagine she loved nature though she grew up just loving nature and hyper focusing on natural occurrings that would happen in nature and jamaica's famous lightning storms and floods were her favorite natural phenomena as they helped her forget about the terrible things that was happening to her in her life she said and i quote my childhood was all about the bible and beatings we we're beaten for any little acts of dissent and hit harder or worse the disobedience 
It formed me as a person, my choices, men I have been attracted to. It was a profoundly disciplined, militant upbringing. And so in my own way, I'm very militant and disciplined, even if that sometimes means being militantly naughty. When her parents, Marjorie and Robert, finally moved to Lancourt, Selena, New York, they finally brought their children with them, finally. <laughs> Grace was then 13 years old. Jones graduated, then continued her education at Onondaga Community College, where she studied Spanish. So Jones started to wear makeup, drink alcohol, and hang out at gay clubs with her brother as a form of protest against her parents and their religious upbringing. She also took a theater class in college and her drama professor managed to talk her into going on a summer stock tour with him in Philadelphia. Arriving in the city, she stayed, becoming fully immersed in the counterculture of the 1960s by settling into hippie communes, supporting herself as a go-go dancer and taking LSD and other substances. They experienced she said was good for me mentally and a very important part of my emotional growth she said of her LSD use later this is a direct quote from her she said coca-cola and y'all know what coca-cola is I can't say for the sake of YouTube was never my substance of use although there are some who might be surprised by that by being so closely associated with studio 54 the assumption is that I was a complete coca-cola fiend if I had taken as much coca-cola as it is rumored I wouldn't have a nose actually I preferred to put a rock up my you know derriere <laughs> lower region rather than snort it sometimes it might get blown up there one way or another then you get a very wonderful sensual feeling in your lower half stick in a tiny little rock up your bottom and it feels fantastic the coca-cola must be clean of course very clean that's the word more than pure or you put it in a bit of lotion and rub it on your skin tried that with a couple of girlfriends in paris night now children please don't try this please 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 don't try this okay oh my goodness the stuff is crazy but as far as her career at the age of 18 she returned to New York and began working as a model for Wilhelmina so Wilhelmina hired her but didn't know how to push her unique looks when Grace Jones decided to cut her hair and shave her eyebrows Wilhelmina was livid she was so mad telling her that she looked aggressive and not marketable she made her swear to never shave her head again and forced her to wear wigs for her shoots Grace felt very awkward and uncomfortable in the wigs she described it as one of the worst periods of her life. So she ended up moving to Paris in 1970 and Paris as we know is much more open. So with her move to Paris she began working with John Casablancas. While working for him he let her know that she was not marketable to Parisians which is a lie. Like Josephine Baker, Nina Simone, so many of the women I've done breakdowns for they all spent some time in Paris. Some ended up moving there permanently like Nina Simone and Josephine Baker because of how open they were. So John Casablancas just didn't know what he was talking about he told her that marketing a black model to Parisians was like trying to sell them an old used car which was so insulting that Grace Jones became so upset visibly of course that she slammed on the table and screamed at him saying I'm going to make you eat those words and boy did she she finally decided to just be herself and keep her hair cut and wear dramatic makeup and wear the clothes that you see that she wears in her iconic photos to the surprise of everyone else except for her of course Paris loved her they loved her different androgynous look and they loved the diversity in her face and accepted her with arms wide open Jones unconventional androgynous bold dark-skinned appearance was well received by the Parisian fashion scene her runway work included for Yves Saint Laurent Claude Montana on editorial spreads for Elle Vogue and Stern Jones also appeared in ads for the fashion house of Azadine Alaya for whom she modeled she lived in Paris as a model with Jerry Hall and Jessica Lange as roommates Hall and Jones socialized with Giorgio Armani and Karl Lagerfeld at Les Set one of Paris most popular gay clubs in the 1970s and 1980s a reissue of Billy Paul's 1970 album Ebony Woman was released in 1973 and Jones was featured on the cover. Jones worked with disco producer Tom Moulton after Island Records signed her portfolio release in 1977 and I Need a Guy was Jones first club success. Jones live shows were highly 
sensualized they were something else <laughs> and they were very flamboyant leading her to be called the queen of the gay discos disney world should have known better than to accept grace jones to sing at one of their events given her history of less than family friendly presentations they did however have her perform and it cost them dearly jones proceeded to fire her up and smoke a couple of joints on stage in front of the kids after which she removed her top and exposed her boobies her tatas to the audience including the children that gained her the respect of her fellow performers and a permanent ban from the happiest place on earth how do you get banned from disney world okay having already recorded two reggae oriented albums under the production of compass point all-stars jones went to nassau bahamas in 1982 and recorded living my life she went on to star in several movies including conan boomerang james bond a view to kill grace jones has revealed she was sensually harassed when she landed her first big acting role speaking to cnn's christian amanpour the icon recalled how a film producer asked her to bring her portfolio to his house so he could make final decision on the casting he poured some champagne he was in his bathrobe and of course took me to a room it was his bedroom Jones said so with the champagne even then at that young age I threw it on his face and walked out the door Jones said it's a power thing for perpetrators of sensual you know adding that people at the beginning of their careers are especially exposed when you're in that position you're so vulnerable you're so nervous you want this break so badly because you've been banging away at the pavement and you finally think I've made it to the big time this is my way the door is open and now you have a monster to confront end quote after Joan's success as a mainstream actress she returned to the studio to work on slave to the rhythm the last of her recordings for island she went on to make several other albums but as far as her personal life a young actor by the name of dolph lundgren was employed by jones in the 1980s to serve as her bodyguard it didn't take long for them to start dating but theirs was no you know regular romance jones according to lundgren's admission brought home as many as five women a night at once all of this happened as he was making rocky and he had this to say because of course there was substance use he said back then everybody in her circle was doing heavy substances coca-cola grog and smoking doobie you know i didn't know anything about substances i was just training at the time this was before substances were a menace to society it was just rich people who were having fun at studio 54 they weren't breaking into cars stealing stuff or taking people's lives so nobody cared you could do substances openly in a restaurant in new york in the 80s and nobody would say anything not even the waiters it was fine at that time so they did a lot of it after many in quotes so after many shocking sensual exploits like they would have their little parties every night if you catch my drift he would get up the next morning and go film for the movie rocky where he played drago during filming he was technically a nobody just considered grace jones bodyguard and boyfriend but movie grossed 300 million at the box office and made a 28 year old lundgren a superstar from the moment the film premiered in los angeles in november 1985 he was shocked by the sudden change in his status so was grace jones who had unsuspectedly gone along to walk the red carpet with him on opening night so lundgren explained and i quote i literally walked in the theater as her boyfriend with people trying to shoot me out the way to take pictures of her and 90 minutes later when i walked out people were trying to take pictures of me instead it was one of those things that happen once in a while in hollywood somebody totally unknown becomes famous overnight other women showed up she got jealous and she couldn't handle it people wanted me to go to openings it was a lot of strain and within six months the relationship was over end quote jones had numerous romantic partnerships over the course of her life but she tied the knot with just one she met her future husband attila alton bay a turkish national in belgium the couple then eloped to brazil where she was working at the time when she returned to syracuse with him she had her father perform the actual marriage ceremony but alton bay's relatives never warmed up to her they got separated and he moved back in with his family but they never let grace jones know where he was so they were never able to get a proper divorce so technically they're still married <laughs> till this day i never i look for updates on that still don't know anything maybe in the future i'll give you guys an update on that but this is all i have for this video that was a lot right comment below your thoughts what do you think who else do you guys like to see turn on your notification bells i have so many wonderful videos lined up for you guys if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description support my brother i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in once again until next time mm -hmm.